Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Infoversity, coming to you from Syracuse University's School of Information Studies. My name is Lex. And my name is Lisette, and today's guest is Dennis Ursoy. He's a senior in the high school in the Information Management and Technology program and a dual at Whitman. He's also president of the Professional Technology Fraternity Kappa Theta Pi. Welcome, Dennis. How are you Hi. today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. So can you tell us why did you choose Syracuse University? Okay, getting right into it. Um, well, my friend actually recommended me the university, and I, uh, he was a year older than me, and I saw that they had a lot of good programs. And I ended up getting a really uh, good scholarship. So that was primarily the reason why I chose it. But I also applied Whitman first. So I saw that they were ranked really high when it came to their finance program. That's why, that's why I chose the school. So after all that, kind of like what made you decide to become a dual major with yeah. high school? Yeah. So uh, freshman year was the, my, well, you guys don't remember, but um, <laughs> I'm a senior, so I'm old. But it was the COVID year. And so everything was online. And it was almost like a transition phase. And I always had an interest in like computer science, you know, coding, things like that. And I actually tried to double major in comm science and <laughs> finance, but it was going to be six years, I think, or it was some oh, ridiculous gosh, number because yeah. I had no credits coming mm -hmm. in. And so I saw that there was a dual program, which, uh, and after reading about it, it was just like basically everything I wanted, just a technical aspect of it. And I felt like I was, uh, because it was a COVID year, a lot of the classes were a little bit easier. And so I was just like, you know what, let me let me try this out. Worst case, I drop it, you know, mm -hmm. but I ended up really enjoying it. And so ever since then, I feel like I've been leaning more towards high school than Whitman, even though I started Whitman. So when you first applied, you applied straight to both? No, I applied only to Whitman. Okay. And then my sophomore year, first semester, okay. I transferred into the high school. Gotcha. Well, dual. Yeah. yeah. And so um, with that, what has your favorite class been while you uh, mm -hmm. during your time at Syracuse? And mm -hmm. how has it kind of helped you? Yeah, uh, unpopular opinion, but it's actually <laughs> IST 256, the uh, intro Python class. Um, I, I've always want, I've been always interested in coding, and I had like almost zero experience, and so this was a class where I could actually learn about it. And you know, I Mike Fudge's was an interesting way to teach it, but I honestly learned a lot. <laughs> I like the labs. Um, it's almost like a game where it's like once you finish the lab, you feel like rewarded because you actually yeah. finished it. You know, it's fun. Just like going off that, has there been a professor at the high school you feel has like made an impact on you? Mm -hmm. um, like teaching wise, I think um, Cher was really good. I, I like the way her class was structured. It was more so, it wasn't too too in depth about the the lecture, like she would go over it. But if you had any questions, it was like the most in depth answer. And it was like amazing how she would just describe a single question and you would understand the entire lecture off that one question. but just teacher wise, I think Perello was really good. Um, mm -hmm. She had two classes with him. I had um, presentations with him, 344, and I had Spring Break in Silicon Valley. Just, he's such an understanding professor. He always cares for you, um, always gives the best advice. So overall, it probably would be him. That's really great. And so to switch gears a little bit, um, we did say that you are the president of Cap Data Pi. I, I so. am. I'm the president <laughs> of Cap Data Pi. So what made you want to rush KTP? Yeah. So. Like I said, um, freshman year was COVID year. Didn't really get to make a lot of friends. I was mm -hmm. kind of locked up in my dorm. Uh, sophomore year, I transferred into the high school. And um, so I was taking my intro classes and I had zero friends because it's mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. I'm coming in, I don't know anybody. And so I saw, I think I saw an email um, from at the time it was Will Mahaney. He sent out an email saying, hey, if you're interested, you know, you can come out. And I was just like, you know what, maybe I can get to meet some people, whatever it is. And even at like the first um, rush event, I just really enjoyed everybody there. I feel like everybody was really nice and honestly, like relatively cool people. Just and I really wanted that aspect of I don't want to say fan, community. I don't want to say family, <laughs> um, but I just really wanted that aspect of community within the mm -hmm. high school. And that's why I decided to rush. That's great. So after rushing, kind of like what led you to want to be more involved and then now yeah. you're president. So kind of like. How yeah. did you get there? Uh, so, like I said, I didn't really have a lot of friends in the high school, <laughs> so I went to any event that I could because I just wanted to get to know people. Yeah. I wanted to. It also just after some time, I made a lot. Of, like most of my close friends are in K, uh, KTP now, and so I just enjoyed spending time with them. So, if if you have a bunch of your friends doing things together, mm -hmm. you're obviously going to want to go. But on the president aspect of it, uh, 
I feel like I owe a lot to the organization. And so it was kind of my way to repay that. Um, I think that it led me to a lot of my close friendships, it led me to a lot of different like skills that I learned over my time at Syracuse. Um, and so what better way to give back than to, to lead it, if, if that makes yeah. sense, and to make sure that it goes and like and make sure that the legacy lives on. Mm-hmm. That's really great. And so other than like the people that you've met within the, um, within the org, what are some other things that you've really taken away from the, or like, what are some really good experiences or things that you think you'll take on with you in yeah. your future? So um, there's a lot of the, the professional aspect that I liked. So <laughs> embarrassing, but I actually didn't really have a good resume until like second <laughs> semester, junior year. And it was a lot of just, you know, sending my resume out to people. And I probably sent it out to maybe five to 10 members. And each one of them had their own thing to say about, you know, change this, change this, change this. And I think getting that collective, you know, agreement with your, with your, uh, with your peers uh, about what you should and shouldn't add, I think that really helped me. Um, also, I really like the community service aspect of it. It's, mm-hmm. we do a lot of fun stuff. Um, like helping hounds is really fun. Uh, we do autothon. That's fun. 12 hours <laughs> yeah. of dancing, 10 hours, whatever it is. Um, but overall, I think it just gives me something to do on campus rather than just, you know, sit at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes me want to go out, do things with people. Mm-hmm. It's fun. So it seems like you're very involved. How do you manage kind of like doing all that and like the social aspect of it with yeah. being like the president of the organization? Yeah. So uh, I think I kind of underestimated how much work president was going to be. But at the same time, I knew that uh, because it's my last it's my last year, I made sure that I was my workload wasn't too bad. Mm-hmm. So I did a lot of my um, requirements and things like that last year. And so this year I had relatively free time. So I think just planning your time around commitments is the most important like advice I can give. Um, obviously, if I was taking all my hard classes now, I would have struggled yeah. to keep up with, because uh, you know, it's, it's all cool saying that you're president, but it actually <laughs> comes with a lot of work. Um, so yeah, time, time, uh, time, managing your time commitments, I think is key. Yeah, and so picking back, piggybacking off of that, um, you have held other positions in the org, mm-hmm. and so how are you able to manage uh, balancing like your course load mm-hmm. as well as um, holding those other positions? Yeah, so I was actually a blogger of Capitate <laughs> Pi um, last year, I think, mm-hmm. and I think that again, it's it's all about time commitments and and focusing on what you value. So obviously, I made sure that classes came first, mm-hmm. and after that, I knew that I had time to you know. Um, some free time to do what I wanted to do. And I think that blogger was pretty fun. I was able to, I actually create, I made videos instead of continuing the blog to you know, <laughs> yeah. change things up, uh, add, uh, add a little bit of my creative aspect to it. And I think over, it was it was a really fun experience. Um, I would do it again if I could, mm. um, but our current blogger is pretty cool too. <laughs> but yeah, time yeah, commitments. It's really great. So after holding all these positions, kind of like what did having a leadership role in the org kind of teach you? Like what's the biggest lesson you took away from yeah, that? Yeah, really good, really good question. Um, I think it's just dealing with people. Um, <laughs> there's always going to be people who disagree with you. There's always going to be people who have different ideas that want to you know, talk to you about it. And I think you have to be open to that. And when I first started the role, I wasn't too adept at that because I this is like my first like real leadership mm-hmm. position and so it's it's a learning process um I learned to you know always value other people's opinions but also uh so respect it while at the same time making sure that they understand your side of the your side as well and so I think I, I, I pretty much honed that over the course of what is yeah. it like, six seven months now mm-hmm. it's been, it's been a while <laughs> So when you first started your um, presidency with KTP, what were some of like the biggest challenges you had to overcome yeah. right off the bat? So um, funny you say that. We actually switched from a FAST organization to an RSO this semester or this year. And so there was a lot of different changes. So usually being president is you just follow in the footsteps of the previous president. Mm-hmm. They tell you what you're supposed mm-hmm. to do, um, your responsibilities. But this year it was completely different because we're in a completely separate organization um, standard. And so I just had to just basically relearn everything, mm-hmm. which it wasn't, it wasn't like crazy bad, but it was just obviously difficult not having anything to uh, reference. Yeah. And so uh, it was a lot of meetings that I went to, um, a lot of time spent learning about how an RSO works. Mm-hmm. Uh, RSO is a registered student organization, uh, if people don't know. But um, we have a really nice advisor, Emily. Shout out to Emily if she's, if she's listening. <laughs> um, but I, I think it's just, you know, time and 
I, I like the organization, so I'm willing to give up that time for it. Great. Learning from your own experience, how do you plan to guide the next president yeah. into their role? Yeah, so definitely going to give them a loaded Word document with <laughs> everything they need to know. Um, I don't want them to go through the same struggles that I did. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, I I like imparting knowledge almost. It's, mm-hmm. it's fun. Like I, I, I like being able to make sure that the like, like that we live on, that we continue, and um, and if that means that I have to, you know, guide the next president on what they're supposed to do, so be it. So, do you have any advice you would have given yourself when you first started, like yeah. thinking about running? Um, don't do no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that I I think I'm getting a bigger deal than it was in my head. Like all mm-hmm. the just seeing the workload that I had to do that first week, I I think just take it one step at a time. Um, it's 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 only hard if you if you make it hard or separate things down to little bits like if you th- if you see like when i first like so we had to go to i don't know it was like 10 meetings or something 10 meetings sounds like a lot but if you mm-hmm. break it down to like a meeting a week or two meetings a week yeah it's not too bad so i think definitely just i was a little bit too nervous in the beginning where yeah. like realistically I'm, I'm sure i always had people to rely on yeah really so just having that. more confidence in yourself yeah, okay yeah, definitely so along with your role, obviously there's like freshmen in the org. Do you kind of like being kind of like a figure that they look up to and coming to you for advice? Yeah, no, I, I, that's actually one of my, um, the things I like a lot um, about being senior. I always like to um, like teach, show people things, that, like mistakes I made that I don't want them to make. Mm-hmm. I am disappointed they don't reach out to me more, but you know, <laughs> um, when they do, I like to make sure that um, they know everything that I didn't know at the time because I, I don't see a point of making people go through the same like yeah. problems or struggles that I went through when it's easily avoidable with information. Yeah, that's really great. And so taking a step back and leaning more towards academics, mm-hmm. do you have um, any advice for people looking to get involved in the high school other than like, or, like other orgs that you've mm-hmm. joined or other just things that you've done to get involved with the high school? Mm-hmm. No, definitely. I think high school is, is unique in the sense that it has a lot of uh, well. When I was working, there was one major. When I when I joined, there was one major IMT, but it was unique in the sense that it had so many different paths. So, even if you don't necessarily know what you want to do, but you still have a passion for technology or a desire to learn more about technology and how its implications. Like I like the fact that you could go the technical route. You could go, you know, data analytics. We're uh, doing Python, SQL. You can go project management. You can go web design. Um, that's what I also like because I know a bunch of people, a few of my friends are doing consulting, mm-hmm. hate coding. They hate the technical mm-hmm. aspect of it, but they like technology. Mm-hmm. They like, you know, being able to explain it to people. And so they have that. And I have other friends who are doing data analytics who are just hate talking to people, but love coding, love SQL, yeah. love Python, whatever it may be. And so I, I, I really enjoy the fact that it has that diversity. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think anybody who's interested in technology should definitely join. Yeah, that's really great. Would you, well, you mentioned that you're involved in this investment club as yeah. well, and that's not very technology yeah. based. So can you just yeah. speak about your like finance experience a yeah. little bit? So um, obviously I've always just been interested in finance and um, that's primarily, you know, actually uh, my job is kind of a mixture of the two, but for investment club, um, I've always been interested in investing. Like my dad gave me a hundred dollars, like when I was like 14 and just to invest, um, and ever since then, I've just been. It, it, it's almost it's, it's almost like a like a dopamine rush, you know, just <laughs> like, just learning, uh, learning, making money out of thin air yeah. almost. Um, but I wanted to get more of an idea about it, and so um, in Whitman, I saw there was an opening for investment club, and I haven't been as um, as uh, active as I should be because just the presidency and then applying to jobs. But definitely my uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, I was a lot more involved. Um, I, I like the aspect. I like, you know, having a group of people. It's, it's more, it's less of a club and more like a class, if that makes sense. Yeah. People, um, like the president will give, uh, give a lecture about, you know, different types of investment strategies like we had. Um, I think one of the professors came to talk about options and derivatives and how the, the math behind those. And so, like, I'm, I'm always I'm somebody who just enjoys always learning, and I think that that was a good way to learn. And we also, one, it also looks really good on your resume. And, <laughs> um, we play like stock games. We play. Uh, we're allowed to pitch stocks. So there's also that learning aspect too, where it's going to be stuff necessary for jobs in the finance field. Like these are very nice, like being able to pitch stocks, being able to like research about them. And so 
I, I thought that it would be really useful, not just socially, but also just educationally. So how have your experiences with these different organizations you're involved in helped to shape like your internship hunt or like mm-hmm. um, finding jobs yeah. for graduation? I think that uh, the networking aspect definitely helped. Um, like some of the places I would not have even known that I could have applied to if it wasn't for people I met at these organizations. Like a lot of people in KTP are in like EY. So mm-hmm. I applied to a lot of internships there, applied to jobs there. Um, And just like I said, the resume aspect of it, um, I actually did not find my job through the organizations, but it it was still the mindset that it gives was Mm -hmm. still relevant. I think Um, you you have to you have to know what kind of job you're looking for. And I think being part of these organizations kind of led me to that path. Mm -hmm. So the job search process is something that's difficult for a lot of people. Can you kind of like describe like what your fears were going into it and your process yeah um so definitely a lot of rejection um and it sucks but i think it's just a part of it um my my mentality is just apply to as much as possible um and i'm not saying just like throw your resume around like apply to jobs you want but it definitely is a numbers game at the end because uh, i think i ended up applying to over 300 jobs and i got think like five or six interviews out of those and then it led me to my full-time position um but it's definitely a numbers game i think you can't be you shouldn't feel bad you shouldn't feel down if you get rejected it's 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 bound to happen um and networking networking is huge um the interviews i got was actually through two of them was through um the career fair which is pretty funny because i went in there with, with not a lot of expectations you know i was just going there to just meet people you know maybe learn about some new companies but i ended up having a really good conversation with one of uh, one of the people and the way i ended up getting an interview for their internship which was i think there's no other way i would have gotten that interview just even if i applied online i don't think they were ever going to see my resume through the amount of people yeah. that applied so what are some skills that you've learned through your classes, both in high school and in Whitman, that have helped you on um, your journey or like applying them during an internship or right. um, for your full time? Well, uh, technical skills, I'd say um, definitely has to be just like the, fine, uh, the the Python and SQL. I think those are the two that's mo- like for, for my field, like for data um, data analysts and different kinds of analysts. I think those are the two that are most important. Um, I actually took a uh, I took 462, which was scripting for uh, data analysis, which used Python. And I also took financial analytics, which used Python for financial modeling. And I think that just learning even the basics of those programming languages definitely helped me um, probably become more valuable to in the job hunt process. So you speak a lot about networking, kind of like what's the biggest like networking event that you attended yeah. in the high school that kind of helped you the most? Yeah. Um, I think career fairs are huge. Uh, the, uh, there was a career fair, La- last year career fair, I ended up getting an interview just because I was talking to somebody who had a good conversation. Like I didn't even know they were at a company. I was just, <laughs> I was just um, in the corner, just uh, taking a break. We ended up just sparking conversation. Um, and so that was pretty funny, but career fairs are huge. And actually I went to one yesterday, last night. Um, I don't know if you know, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Fouts uh, was hosting a networking event mm-hmm. where he was, 11 alumni and 11 uh, students and that was really fun it was like little speed networking we'd like walked around um just getting to talk to people i think is 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 pretty important um you also need to understand that it's not always just going to be about jobs so yeah you obviously you i think the best way to do uh, to to network is to i'd be personable you know, talk to them about their day, about their favorite sports team. And then, you know, be like, hey, you know, I'm also looking for names. <laughs> like, if you have any openings, let me know. Um, but people are more likely to give you an internship because they like you. Like, they'll think about you because they like you. And be like, oh, this guy, this guy is, you know, looking for data jobs. Let me give him that. So I think just work on being more personable and um, just go to as many events as you can. Um, and don't miss the career fair. Don't miss the career fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with that, all the people that you've like made these connections with through um, just the university in general, is there any like specific people that really stand out to you that have really like kind of made your time at the university? Mm-hmm. Um, I think for the career advisors are really good. Um, not just I school, I went to Whitman Career Advisor as well. Um, I was so I got my first interview 
uh, with, which was, I think, uh, beginning of first semester, and I had no clue what to do. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Career Services, and they gave me a rundown about what I should ex uh, expect, gave me access to some like services that I should use, and things like that. And I think that really helped ease some of the nerves. Mm -hmm. as, you, as you can tell, I'm a little bit of a nervous person, but it uh, <laughs> eased some of the nerves, um, made me more confident in actually going to it. I think Career Services was really good. Um, what else? I don't know. I think I sent Jeff out my resume. He gave me a decent, you know, about what I should do, what I shouldn't do. Um, yeah, overall, just career services helped a lot. Yeah, great. Right. You mentioned um, kind of going on immersion trips and you went mm -hmm. on spring break in Silicon Valley. Can you kind of explain kind of like what that's like and why people should kind of take advantage of those opportunities? Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually was not, exp I've, I've never been to California. So I was, that's the main reason why I wanted to do it. I wasn't, I didn't really know what to expect, but um, seeing the companies list, like we went to Google, we went to uh, went to a bunch of banks, we went to what was the it's the HP's company Aruba, Aruba, Aruba. HP. we went to Aruba. Yeah. Those are like it's really interesting just seeing being able to see the actual like workplaces because I don't know like in I feel like college is a I don't want to say close off environment but it's mm -hmm. sort of like a like a dome where you're not really you don't see what the real world uh, applications are like and going on this immersion trip you're able to like actually see what the office looks like what the like I, going on the immersion trip i realized there's a lot of people switching to remote work just seeing that there's less people in the office and that's not something i think i could have gone just you know just through college just just staying yeah. on campus and if you have the opportunity i would definitely definitely go on uh, as many immersion trips as you can yeah. And so as well as those trips, um, have you had like any like internships that have really like formed your experience and like helped you on your journey for finding like your full time position that you have after mm -hmm. graduation? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say internships necessarily, but I've always like last summer I, was, I worked along with my dad at our, at our grocery store and I did a lot of like the technology based mm -hmm. stuff. And so I realized that is something I really enjoyed doing. It was a lot of like data analytics, we had um, we ended up uh, finding like the revenues cost. So I, I, I found that I really enjoyed the the finance and technology aspect of it, like the the um, the middle ground of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that internships are valuable in the sense that it, it tells you what something you like or don't like. Mm -hmm. And so if you have the opportunity, do as many as you can, just so you can really hone in on what you like. Because in your mind, it might sound nice. It might sound like, oh, I want to do this. But then when you actually get to doing it, you're like, okay, maybe not. Maybe, not. <laughs> maybe this is not meant for me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think just do as many as you can. So just like you're someone that obviously likes both the finance and the technology mm -hmm. field, kind of how did you kind of like narrow that down when looking for a job? Were you looking for more technical roles or more financial roles? Um, I cast a pretty wide net. Um, some, of, some of my jobs are purely just financial analysts where it's only Whitman. Some of them are data analysts, which is only high school and somewhere in between. Like the one I have right now is an analyst in the finance department. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that I had that Whitman background is what got me through to the next stage of the interview, uh, through the first, to the first stage of the interview. And so I was just testing to see what I like, what I don't like. Um, in the end, I think I, I really like the job that I got right now because it's, it's a cohesion of both. And uh, I couldn't ask for something better than that. Yeah, that's really great. And so um, looking at like this job that you have, are there anything that you um, plan to like take from this job and kind of put that towards like your future with yeah. all the changes in like technology and obviously like how those are going to change the financial settings as well? Yeah. Um, do you think there's any like path that you want to take with this job? Yeah. Um, so the, the, the job I have is a, it's a two year rotational program and I applied to a lot of rotational programs just because I'm still not 100% sure what I want to do. And I like the aspect of being able to go around all the different departments and like and seeing what you like. And and so I think that's a huge thing. Um, maybe I'm going to continue with the company. Maybe not. I'm, not. I'm not sure yet. But I think getting that experience within all the different sectors is going to be something that's invaluable because let's say... I really enjoyed working in FP&A of uh, uh, financial planning and analysis, and maybe I'll continue through there. Um, 
I can end up, you know, saying, oh, I did, you know, a six month rotation in this department and then use that experience to, you know, find a job later on at a different company that focuses primarily on that. Mm -hmm. For like the data analysis side of it, I can focus on that. So I think um, definitely right now, so I'm not too sure what I want to do, but uh, hopefully by the end of the rotations, <laughs> I will. And I'm going to carry that on with me. Yeah. So entering the workforce is kind of like nerve wracking for mm -hmm. a lot of people. How do you feel about it? And how are you like getting prepared for it? Yeah. So um, my job is actually in a different state. It's in Maryland and I'm from Queens, New York City originally. So it's a big change. Um, I don't know anybody in Maryland. I, <laughs> you know, it should be, should be interesting. Um, but I think you just have to welcome change. Uh, like it's going to happen. I think it's 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 best to get out of your comfort zone and be able to you know see meet new people because if you stay in the same area you're never going to expand your network you're never going to get to meet new people and so you know who knows maybe maybe I will really like Maryland and I'll <laughs> want to stay there uh, but we'll see I think yeah that's that's the main thing that I was a little bit nervous about just moving to a different state but I think I'm just going to you have to look at it not in a nervous sense, but in an excitement sense. Mm -hmm. It's a new place. You can get to meet new people. It's gonna, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, and so it's really great that you've been able to get like a job before you've graduated. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any advice for students who like upcoming or upcoming seniors or students who are looking to still apply for full time jobs? Mm -hmm. I, I think the only advice is there's gonna be a company out there for you. Um, you just have to keep going. Like you don't. Like my roommate still doesn't have a job, but, and it's like really late into the year. So we kind of lost hope, but yesterday you got an interview with EY. So there's, there's always, you, you can't give up hope. Um, if, if you believe that you're somebody who is, is adept and, you know, is able to make sure that the val put, put value into a company, I think you're going to get a job eventually. And worst case, you take a gap year or you work something else and then you go back into it, get some certifications um so there's there's a there's plenty of options you know the only thing i think you shouldn't do is is lose hope mm -hmm. i think there's always going to be a job out there so graduation is just getting closer uh, don't closer. remind me please. <laughs> please don't um, how are you how's kind of like the end of the semester looking like for you and kind of like what plans do you have in store for yeah you? um so i'm actually not my course load is pretty light right now because i took all the classes mm -hmm. i needed to and so a lot of what i'm doing i'm just um so this semester actually i got a job at the veteran center so i'm doing that uh, i think 12 to 15 hours a week mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty fun which i actually got through networking by the way yeah, <laughs> I my brother jordan um <laughs> But I, I do that a lot. Um, then I go home, you know, end up uh, just hanging out with, with mm -hmm. my roommates. I think I kind of, I, I kind of plan my semester, my schedule around having uh, a lighter workload my last mm -hmm. semester, so I can just hang back, relax a little bit, enjoy like the last couple weeks I have or the last couple months I have mm -hmm. in college. Yeah, I'm not not really excited to graduate. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gonna miss this place. And so, um, as you're ending, like the kind of final few weeks of the semester, your last spring break and stuff, what advice do you have for yourself looking back on like the time that you've had here? Yeah. Like, what advice would you give to yourself as a freshman? Yeah, I, I just wish I was more confident and less nervous. Um, freshman year, maybe it might have been COVID too. I was not social at all. And I think I lost, I think I wasted a lot of time by just, you know, sitting in my room I, if I could go back, I would definitely be a lot more social, talk to a lot more people, um, make that make those connections, mm -hmm. and also apply to a lot more internships. I think that I thought I like was kind of laid back freshman and sophomore mm -hmm. year, where I was just like, oh, you know, it's freshman, so I like I'm fine. But I know plenty of people who are doing internships right now as freshmen, as sophomores, applying mm -hmm. to different programs. Like my brother's a freshman right now, and I'm trying to, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, you should apply to this, apply to this. But he's also in the same mindset as me. I was like, oh, it's freshman year. I'll be fine. But that's that's stuff I, I would have definitely applied to a lot more places. Mm -hmm. So we just asked you kind of like a reflective question, but what are you most excited for kind of oh, like after. going like post-graduation? Um, I think just getting to meet new people, um, meeting like uh, now it's actually pretty uh, funny because now it's a completely changed where freshman year I didn't want to meet anybody mm -hmm. but now I just I, I really enjoy meeting new people talking to them about you know what they do and meeting professionals and seeing 
like I, I like the whole mentor mentee aspect too. I like being a mentor, but I also like being a mentee. I like learning about new things, and I think I can get that at um, at the different companies I work at and different places I go. And just getting that social aspect, I'm kind of excited for. And also, like adulting is not as bad as it sounds. You know, like you go to work, you go home. There's no homework. That's it. You do. It. You can just relax. You just you know, just chill. Yeah. And so kind of like looking at both um, the future and as well as like reflecting on your time here, have there been any moments just throughout your time here, whether that's academic, personal, within orgs, um, networking, or anything like that, that have really set you up or just been key moments in your time at Syracuse mm -hmm. that have like helped prepare you or made you more excited for like post-graduation? Yeah. Um, I think just, I think being proud being president was pretty big in that. Um, being president and joining KTP, I guess. Um, I just, I, I felt like I wanted to belong somewhere on campus and having that and being able to lead that um, makes me kind of excited to see where it's gonna go after graduation. Um, hopefully you guys <laughs> take take care of it while I'm gone. But um, I think that, I think that's what's most exciting. Um, I hope I hope it continues and I hope that you know I can come back next year for a long night weekend mm -hmm. and see it thriving. So you've achieved a lot during your college career. Is there anything kind of that you're like still working towards or mm -hmm. do you have any goals set leading up to graduation? Mm -hmm. I do. I have like a, I'm trying to make a bucket list of things I want mm -hmm. to do before graduation. Like one of them is go to every building on campus. <laughs> so it's I, like, I think I'm pretty content with, yeah. with my time here. I think like I could have done better freshman year, just talk to more people. But overall, like I'm not worried about like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, things I missed out. It's just like, you know, fun little things that I want to do. Like, you know, um, go to every building. Well, what's on your bucket list of things you want to do before you graduate? Let me see if we have any similar um, ones. Well, I haven't been to all the dorms yet. So like uh, freshman, freshman year, I only stayed in mine. I've yeah. never been to BBV. Yeah, like, like I've never really been there either. I, I had think to I go need to there. Go. I had to go there to get a package once. It was not fun from day. I heard not they fun. have, um, what's it called, like the sunshine corner? Yeah. Or something like that. Do they not get sun in there? What do you no, like, no they can see the sunset. Oh. Yeah, yeah, sunset corner. Oh, oh that's And fun. I've heard that it's like a really great place to go like study um, or just like to just mm -hmm. see the sunset, I guess. So I've always nice. wanted to see that. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I like the, um, I want to visit all the buildings. I want to go to the penthouse in Lawrence. I think it always says Carnegie. that. I've yeah. never been in Carnegie. The really? Library. No. I've been in the basement, but never the library. Oh, that's really class interesting. Yeah, I don't. It's like wait, I just never had a reason to, but I definitely want to do that. Uh, what else? I don't know. Just fun things like that. Just things to do. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so, with that, are there any like non-academic related things that you kind of like wanted to do before you were able to graduate? Whether that's like something with your friends that you like taking a trip or just doing something that with the people that you've met here, because yeah. you've talked about all those great connections that you've made through the different orgs. So is there anything like with those people that you really want to yeah. like? I definitely want to do a, like a barbecue before graduation, <laughs> like a, but like, it's going to be a barbecue. Like it's going to be, <laughs> I bought a uh, $15 uh, grill from Facebook marketplace, okay. cleaned it, you know, it's, 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 it's good. good. It's going to, <laughs> um, but I definitely want to put that to use. Um, and I have a big backyard this year, so, mm -hmm. you know, should be should be fun. Like a giant, you know, graduation barbecue. Yeah. Do you have any final remarks? <laughs> Rush Capitata Pie, everybody. <laughs> um, and love iSchool. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, really no appreciate problem. it. It's great hearing all your advice. <laughs>